Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. And I got another box for a song of Ice and Fire here. Probably because I steadfastly refuse to have anybody that looks remotely civilized for this game. That's right, we've got the Free Folk Heroes, and sadly they don't come with a table to all hang around and look heroic being heroes and all. So in here we have Jarl the Weeper, Steer Magnar of Thin, you grit, we all know her. Harma's Bannerman, Harma the Dog's Head, and Rattleshirt, Lord of Bones. So with names like that, they've got to be awesome, right? Well, let's find out. So, we've got a card for the Bone Lord's Chosen. Let's set that to the side because we have no idea how to play the game. We've got a big old pack of cards here. I'll just leave those for someone who knows what they're doing. There is no fancy movement tray obviously because we've got heroes this time heroes <laughs> get to do things by themselves now i'm gonna keep that hand up oh, that's the top of the box <laughs> let's keep the bottom with those names handy over here so i know what the heck i'm talking about all right let us behold the parade of heroes first up is Jarl. Now, I don't remember Jarl because it's been a while since I've read the books, but I'm sure he was in there at some point or another. Surprisingly, for a cool mini figure, all of his weapons are nice and straight. You can hear that twang. And he doesn't want to stay in focus either. Come on, dude. There's nobody else on the screen even. There we go, at least. So he looks like a nice figure. I'm really impressed by the fact that his weapons are actually straight. Okay, switch to the side, Jarl. And now we have, this is the Bannerman. Harness Bannerman. I'm not sure what his staff is made out of, but it looks like it's got a wolf head on it? Or a bear head? I don't know what the second one is. I guess there's two wolves, one wolf and a bear. Something along those lines. I thought he was wearing a bear's head, but it doesn't seem like a pretty dynamic sculpt. This dude would make a great druid or something for just about any tabletop skirmish game. Very naturey. Again, I really like he's got a bit of dynamicism to him with the cape flowing behind him there. And the you know nothing Jon Snow woman herself, you greet. And she does not want to be photographed today, I guess. Wow. We are having a hard time here. Okay, that's better. Okay, and again, surprisingly nice and sturdy, but you'll notice that her hand is not actually attached. It seems like these are actually the harder plastic, and they've actually put it together for us prior to shipping. That would explain the very firm nature of the weapons so far. Overall, she's a nice sculpt. And who is in my hands here? This is Harma the dog's head. I don't remember this character at all. He's a big dude. He's a well-fed dude. I'm assuming it's a dude. Is it? Looks like it. So. Again, he's going to fit in really well with all my cavemen savages. We'll pull those out in a little bit. Alright, who's next? There's Steer. It's a nice sculpt. And he comes equipped with a tactical rock. I do like the fact that they're actually dressed like they're going into battle and it's not, you know, subtropical weather on the Bahamas or something. Interesting looking armor. And again, hear that twang. Nice, solid, sturdy weapons. Be a fun one to paint. Next up, the Weeper. Here's another character I don't remember. I'm sure they were in the books at some point or another. like the side. Nice looking model. And finally the best model of all in the box. Good old rattle shirt. Check that blade out. Dude is ready for business. He's in the knife business and business is booming. 
Really nice sculpt for him. One thing I've noticed that even when the figures look like they have kind of mushy detail, give them a good quick Agrax Earth Shade Wash or Strong Tone or something along those lines and it really helps make things pop. Even if you're not going to paint the models themselves, I highly recommend putting a little something on there to help those details stand out. Nobody wants to go into battle with their models plain and boring. So, let's see how our friends here all compare with other models I've got laying around. Now, first of all, obviously, they need to hang out. This guy's off camera. All the bone dwellers and bone eaters and cave dwellers. That's what I'm thinking of. And you can see here, they fit right in, especially with good old rattle shirt. I mean, these guys, they're his crew after all. And the cavemen, too. They fit in mighty nice. One thing I've noticed is all of our heroes are actually standing completely upright, whereas most of these cavemen or cave dwellers were actually all kind of hunched over. Grabbing my usual witch hunter friend here, you can see, I mean, they're really to scale. They'd probably scale well with some of the older Lord of the Rings models. They'd probably fit in pretty well with Frostgrave models. Do I have any Frostgrave models handy? You bet I do. Bring them to the forefront. The Frostgrave models are a little bit smaller, but, you know, being savage cave dwellers, bone eaters, and heroes, I think they'd fit in perfectly. If you wanted to use stuff like this for Rangers of Shadows Deep or Frostgrave, I think these figures would really fit in well, especially they'd be in more heroic roles in a warband anyways. You could probably get a lot of usage out of them. I'm really looking forward to painting them. They are very nice sculpts, and hopefully... Maybe someday they'll actually get used for their intended purpose in a game of A Song of Ice and Fire. But I doubt it. So let's get everybody else out of the way one last time. Can I actually remember their names? Ha ha ha, of course not. So if I were to ever want to go acquire any of these figures individually for whatever reason, I know there's always bit sellers that seem to break down these boxes. Honestly, my top pick would be What's his name? Steer? The Magnar of Thin and probably or Jarl or whatever his name was. <laughs> I tossed the box aside. I don't remember now. It was Jarl. I got a thing for those big fur collars, whether or not they actually want to stay in focus. Come on, dude. There we go. No, you were right there. I apologize profusely. God. I like all the bones hanging off of his collar. He's got just that big rock and collar. Nice looking weapons. Tactical rock. He's got a lot going on for him here. So yeah. Cool little group of models. And hopefully, you know, if you're after one or two by themselves, you'll be able to hunt them down eventually. And they're pretty reasonably priced as it is. That's one nice thing about the Song of Ice and Fire models. So, hopefully you found this helpful, and I am going to bid you all a fond farewell. This is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying see you later. Bye-bye.